Let's begin with talking about the social structure theories, uh, problems of the lower class. Oscar Lewis in 1966 coined the phrase culture of poverty. The theory of a culture of poverty, according to him, states that living in conditions of pervasive poverty will lead to the development of a culture or subculture adapted to those conditions. This culture is characterized by pervasive feelings of helplessness, dependency, marginality, and powerlessness. Furthermore, Lewis described individuals living within a culture of poverty as having little or no sense of history and therefore lacking the knowledge to alleviate their own conditions, instead focusing solely on their own troubles. So for Lewis, the imposition of poverty on a population was the structural cause of the development of a culture of poverty, which then becomes autonomous as behaviors and attitudes developed within a culture of poverty. They get passed down to subsequent generations through socialization processes, uh, creating an underclass. And uh, underclass is a group of people that William Julius Wilson, in his writings, uh, described as truly disadvantaged, which, according to Wilson, were primarily minority group members in devastated urban communities. The culture of poverty provides that behavior derives solely from preferred cultural values, that is, evidence of poverty itself, including rates of unemployment, crime, school dropout rates, and drug use are assumed to be the result of behavior preferred by individuals living within conditions of poverty. The culture of poverty theory, theory presumes the development of a set of deviant norms, whereby behaviors like drug use and gang participation are viewed as the norm and even desired behaviors of those living in the impoverished communities. An alternative explanation is that uh, individuals or delinquents behave in a way that are illegal. Uh, they like participation in underground uh, economy and participation in gangs, not because they wish to do so or are following their cult culture norms, but because they have no choice given the lack of educational and job opportunities available in the neighborhoods. In other words, individuals living in these um, communities are, or areas may see themselves as forced to turn to illegal methods of getting money, for example, selling drugs, simply to survive within the conditions of poverty. So the view is that the lower class people form a separate culture, which uh, it has their own values and norms, and uh, they are referred to as the underclass which is a group of urban poor whose members have little chance of upward mobility, mobility or improvement. So social structure theories explain that crime is the result of an individual's location within the structure of society. This approach focuses on the social and economic conditions of life, including poverty, alienation, social disorganization, weak social control, personal frustration, relative deprivation, differential opportunity, alternative means to success, and deviant subcultures and subculture values that conflict with conventional values. The three prominent views under the social structure theories are social disorganization, the strain or the anonymy, it's also called, theories, and cultural deviance theory. And we'll go through each one of those in uh, detail. We are going to start with so disorganization. Social disorganization links crime rates to neighborhoods, ecological characteristics. Crime rates are highest in transient, mixed use and changing neighborhoods where fabric of social life has become frayed. The result is that residents who can flee crime-ridden neighborhoods as soon as they can, they do, and then they take with them, taking from these communities the common resources, such as businesses. One study, one famous study, Clifford Shaw and Henry McKay study uh, on the concept of social disorganization, which is defined as an area marked by cultural conflict lack of cohesiveness, a transient population, and insufficient social organizations. They did this study. It was conducted uh, of juvenile, based on juvenile arrest rates in Chicago over a 65-year period. 
Over the years, they found high rates of neighborhood transition, during which one immigrant group after another moved in rapid rapid succession from the inner city towards the suburbs, a process that was repeated with the arrival of each new wave of immigrants. They found that rates of offending remained relatively constant over time within zones of transition, and they concluded that delinquency was caused by the nature of the environment in which immigrants lived rather than by the characteristic of the immigrant groups themselves. They saw social disorganization as the inability of local communities to solve common problems, and they believe that the degree of disorganization in a community was largely caused by the extent of residential mobility and lack of racial diversity. As a result of this study, uh, they developed the idea of cultural transmission, which held that traditions of delinquency were transmitted through successive generations of the same zone in the same way that language roles and attitudes were communicated. According to this view, the social disorganization view, the neighborhoods that are disorganized and unhealthy lack social control because they are affected by deterioration and economic failure. Therefore, the youth of these communities are at uh, risk of delinquency because of the lack of police, government agencies, or watchful eyes like parents or neighborhoods. And we're going to talk a little bit more about controls, but just to bring it up, social control allows for the ability of an organized community to regulate itself via formal and informal social control. And we'll talk about social control in more detail in a bit. In contrast, the characteristics of deprived communities reduce the ability and willingness of residents to exercise effective control. This includes the ability and willingness of parents to control their own children and of school officials, those informal institutions, to control students or of community residents to control one another. So in particular, the residents in high crime communities are less likely to exercise effective direct control. For example, community residents are less likely to engage in activities like taking note or questioning strangers or watching over each other's property assuming the responsibility for supervision of the general youth activities and intervening with local disturbances. And like I said, we're going to discuss that and how that works in a moment. So that is the work of the uh, Shaw and McKay transitional neighborhoods is the key uh, relative to their study and their creation that creates deteriorating uh, neighborhoods. We're going to move to social ecology. Uh, The focus on, this is the focus on studying the ecological conditions and their effect on one's behavior and how that affects the crime rate. Other factors that encompass social disorganization include community change and fear, poverty specific areas, and collective efficacy. Community change and deterioration is abandoned properties, you know, for example, and that could be homes, it could be businesses, they're boarded up, they're closed, they're run down storefronts, they attract crime. And these are the locations with the highest violence rates and gun crimes. Businesses move out, there's less work, those who can move out do, those who can't compete for the little jobs that are left or they're unemployed usually and usually these are minorities who remain and these areas become poverty stricken gains are more gangs are more prone to develop and then crime and delinquency there are attempts to uh for impoverished areas gentrified or to get improved to stabilize them uh, an example of this is the city of detroit in its heyday as Motor City, it was home to the automotive industry. The city now is filled with empty buildings and factories and homes, and the population has reduced significantly to about 700,000. And this is an example of a city believed to produce the social conditions that create high rates of crime and delinquency. Community fear. As fear increases, quality of life deteriorates. There are a number of things that cause fear. Lack of feeling part of a community. People are isolated and disconnected from neighbors. More likely to view their environment as dangerous. 
people in social disorganized communities tend not to respect the police. Kids hang out, loiter. Some may join gangs to perfect, uh, protect themselves. Poverty concentration. Poverty becomes concentrated to specific areas as people flee. We just discussed that in the McKay study. They take with them the resources and support needed to instill informal social control, thereby resulting in less social controls and hence increased fear. So everything kind of rolls together. Collective advocacy, process in which mutual trust and willingness to intervene in the supervision of children and help maintain public order creates a sense of well-being. In other words, communities where residents are willing to work together to exercise direct control over others are said to be high in collective efficacy. They can look at each other as neighbors and even businesses, churches, schools, and other community services to adequately supervise the community neighbors and, and children. When kids see that community is caring, the presence of social controls shapes their behavior. They have expectations of how to act even when parents aren't around to monitor them. Residents in deprived communities are less likely to provide kids with a stake in conformity, which includes establishing close ties to them and helping them succeed at school and work. And the residents are less likely to socialize kids to that they can condemn them to crime or what happens is the residents are less likely to socialize the kids so that they are condemned to crime or delinquency um, and they lack the ability to develop self-control. There are three forms of control. I just touched on it a moment ago. Let's talk about it in more detail. Informal social control. Informal social control reflects the ability of local neighborhoods to supervise the behavior of their residents and the capacity of neighborhoods to socialize their residents conventionally. In neighborhoods characterized by high levels of informal social control, social disorganization is comparatively low, suggesting the importance of informal social control as a strategy to achieve community social organization. Examples include peer and community pressure, bystander intervention in a crime, a collective uh, response such as citizen patrol groups. It is people who know each other informally, controlling each other in subtle ways, subconsciously. The agents of criminal justice system exercise more control when informal social control is weaker. Institutional social control. What is that? Communities that have collective efficacy attempt to use their local institutions to control crime. These sources include businesses, stores, schools, churches, and social service and volunteer organizations. These allow a place where neighborhood residents and children can be involved in non-delinquent or criminal behavior versus joining a gang when these are effective. Uh, when these are effective, the crime rate goes down. Disorganized neighborhoods uh, disrupt the influence of these institutions, and hence what happens, the crime rate goes up. Public social control. This is our police, our government, Research on public social control and neighborhood crime is concerned with a neighborhood's ability to secure external economic, political, and social resources necessary to effectively engage in social control and combat crime and disorder. The more stable neighborhoods are, the better they are at having these resources, which leads to lower crime rate. On the other hand, disorganized communities don't have the resources or the influence to obtain these external resources. Hence, there's less policing or less police patrol, and then more crimes are being committed, hence higher crime rates. And that's how the forms of control work. 